We have traveled all over East Africa, finding hardworking farmers who are making a good life on their shambas. We want to learn from them, turn their farms into good businesses, and help them increase their profits. Join us and see how our farmers benefit from the experts' advice. And share their experiences as we shape up their shambas. <laughs> Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shepa. Today we're on a whistle stop tour of three Shambas. And we need to find out if our farmers have been following expert advice. Now, we need to work with them to make sure that their mangoes, their cows, their chickens, their Shambas, and everything that they grow, yes. maybe starting from... <laughs> we don't, we don't yeah? have enough time. We need to go, Tony. Come on. And maybe... Come on. <laughs> when we have done a Shape Up, we like to go back and see how the farmers are doing. A few years ago, we visited Angela and Joseph in Wotema Kweni. We helped them harvest water from their farm and planted some trees with them. Water is a dry area and farmers here need to do all they can to look after their shambas. Barak from Food Agriculture Organization has come to help Joseph improve his shamba. Joseph, yeah. have you ever practiced uh, conservation agriculture? No. Never? Never. But you have heard of it. Yeah, I have heard of it. Conservation agriculture is a type of farming where farmers protect their soil by plowing as little as possible, keeping the soil covered and rotating and intercropping legumes with grain crops. So what challenges do farmers like Joseph here face when practicing conservation agriculture? There are many challenges farmers face, especially in the arid areas and semi-arid areas like Makweni, Machakos, Kitui. One is that the pattern of grazing here is wild. They leave their animals to graze anyhow, especially after harvesting. How does that affect the soil? When the animals eat all the crop residues, then the soil is less left exposed to the sun and the rain. It also affects the soil in that the animals compact the soil and you, that will limit the infiltration of water into the soil. So Joseph, do you have problems with cows grazing in your shamba? Yeah, of course they come and uh, eat the remains in the shamba. I have got no, no fence of my shamba. So your neighbor's cows also come in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joseph, last time we were here, we planted trees. Yeah. How are they doing? They are doing well. So Barak, what is the importance of trees? Trees will not only give the farmer the money, but the trees will also uh, provide construction material. Trees also will pump the nutrient from the deeper soil layers and bring it on the surface for the plants like maize and beans. And finally, they also provide the shade, which would have been provided by the crop residues that farmers tend to live on the soil. Right. Now, Joseph, yeah. which kind of trees have you planted in your shamba? Yeah, mango trees, mm -hmm. orange trees, and the uh, greveria. Titonia, Lucina, Caliandra, those three are important for, as a source of fodder for the, his livestock. He should not only focus on trees that uh, give him fruits like mangoes and uh, oranges, but he could also consider planting trees like tamarind. They are fruits, improve the quality of food, uh, and it is for export. He can also plant medicinal trees like moringa olifera, which is also important. It provides a very good shade. When do I find in the summer? Because they can affect the, the clothes. The trees should not affect the crop if you do a correct selection of the trees. Yeah. And that's why we, we, the, the list of the trees I have given you, they are friendly to your crop. You must leave sufficient spacing for the crop to, to, to get sunlight and also to have sufficient nutrients. So, Barak now, yes. from here, which kind of trees are we going to plant together with Joseph? I would like us to plant uh, tamarind, mulinga olifera, and also, I would like us to plant one of the acacia species. 
that is very good as a nitrogen fixing tree. To plant trees successfully, make sure you prepare the planting hole before the rains. Dig a hole at least two feet wide by two feet deep. Take out the topsoil, put it to one side. Dig out the subsoil, mix it with manure and return the mix to the planting hole. Plant the seedling in the wet soil. Return the topsoil around the seedling. Mulch the seedlings to protect them from the sun. Remember, plant at the start of rains. And if there is not enough rain, water the seedlings every other day. Joseph and Angela have lots of mango trees on their farm. Mangoes are a very healthy thing to eat for all the family, especially for the children. What are the benefits of mangoes, and especially to us and, you know, like Abu here? Mangoes are an excellent source of vitamin A, vit vitamin B6, and vitamin C. Uh -huh. Yes, and uh, as you know, nutrients are very good for, 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 for good health. Right. For instance, vitamin A is very good for good vision and also improve Im immune system. Also, vitamin C is very critical for a small baby like Abu, because he needs vitamin C for, for strong immunity. Mm -hmm. for strong immune system. Also for B6 is very good for, for women, especially pregnant women, mm -hmm. and for children also, mm -hmm. uh, because it also strengthens the immune system. The vitamin C content in mango is, is equivalent to that in orange. And also mango, as you know, it has a lot of energy, so it's a good food to give you energy for, for active lifestyle. Uh, you are able to differentiate the content of vitamin A by just looking at the color of the mango. For instance, there are different varieties with different um, nutrition content. For instance, here I have two varieties. That is apple mango, which is very known here, and the goe. And we'll cut and see the difference in color. This is goe. So I have two varieties, that is goe and apple. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, the colors are different. So this one, which is close to the uh, to orange, it has more vitamin A than goe. Ajira and Naomi, as you are aware, that mangoes are very seasonal. To increase the shelf life of the mangoes, you can dry mangoes to avoid maybe a lot of wastage on the farm. And also you can do juicing. And also maybe you can make jam. So it's a good way of making money for your group and for yourself. Agnes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which mango can you mature Hali? Yes. We have the Tommy Atikin, we have the apple mango, and we have the Alfonso. Then for the mid-season, we have the Gowe, we have the, the Zil, and the Van Dijk. For the rich... Uh, maturing mangoes, we have the Kate and the Kent. Where should I get that kind of material? Yes, you can get the grafted materials from, from curry. It is important to use grafted mango trees. Grafted trees fruit earlier and grow better than trees grown from the seed. To plant a mango tree, first get the spacing right. If you are intercropping mango trees with your crops like sorghum, leave 14 meters between the rows and 14 meters between the trees. If not, spacing is 12 meters by 12 meters. If you use grafted trees, the spacing is 10 meters by 10 meters because the trees are smaller. To plant mango trees, dig holes 3 feet deep and 3 feet wide. Follow the same rules as Joseph and Tony did with the other trees. Remember to mulch the seedlings and check they're getting enough water. If 
you manage your trees well and stop pests and diseases, you can get great mangoes. So, it's important to look after them even when you're harvesting. Pick the mangoes carefully and don't drop them on the ground. Pick mangoes with a small stem still attached. Let the sap dry and then carefully pack the mangoes into crates if you're selling them or into a cool dark store if you're keeping them for your family. Then you can eat them fresh or make jam or juice or dry them so you can have mangoes to eat all year round. With all these great new trees, Angela and Joseph's family and their shamba will be healthier than ever. Now, we just need to find out how to control those pests on the mango trees. Let's take a break first. Then, we can look at the mango pests and a very successful greenhouse farmer. If you'd like to receive all our Shamba Shepherd leaflets, SMS the word ALL together with your name and address to 30606. If you'd like to receive just the leaflet for this Shamba, SMS the name of the farmer together with your name and address to 30606. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are going to see how a little hard work can work magic in a greenhouse. But first, we are going to visit a farmer in Embu who has a fantastic mango orchard. Mr. Murezi, this is very, very impressive. Well done. Thank you. You've done a good job. Wow. Sebastian, what do you think? The mangoes are looking excellent. Yeah. Really, really good. Good so quality. How long have you worked with Mr. Murethi? For Mr. Murethi, now we've been working him, with him for two seasons. Mm -hmm. This is his third season. And, the, I, yeah. and I think the results have always been consistent. Since then? Yes, yeah, since then. What's the difference between the earlier seasons and right now? There are two major differences. One is on the side of, ma of the market. What has improved? When your mangoes are good, are well managed, you, you don't have to, to struggle going looking for them buyers. They will come. They will meet you there. Uh, home, yeah. So, so the, 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 the people we are seeing behind us here are actually the buyers coming to you. <laughs> they slept here last night. They slept here? Last night. Harvesting? Simply because of this mango. Aye. Yeah. You are doing well. So, Sebastian, what do buyers look for in the mangoes? The size the color of the mango, the absence or presence of pests and diseases. In this case, they will always prefer the absence of it, as well as um, the, the general appearance of the mango itself. Is it presentable or not? Mm -hmm. yes. Now, Mr. Murethi, mm -hmm. which pests did you have problems with? There's this mango seed weevil and uh, mirin bugs, mm -hmm. plus uh, the fruity fry. So uh, how did you get rid of them? On the side of a uh, fruity fry, there are these uh, traps from uh, Rirain IPM. They call the, the, them IDD, and they have several. Uh, they told us we should be having eight traps in a nectar. What are the main challenges that farmers around here are facing, especially when it comes to mangoes? It is uh, the most challenging problem we have in mangoes as farmers is the market. Mm -hmm. What was the main problem with the market? Previously, we were, we were unable to control the diseases in, the, in our orchards. And before real IPM came, that one also was an entrance because the, the buyers rather wanted uh, good, um, exciting, may I say, preferring, they, could, they needed a green mango which we could not be able to make because before it was very expensive. In Aneka, you could use at least 35,000 to manage a good, to, for you, to manage a shamba for you to get a good mango that you can sell. At the same time, when you come selling, the prices were, not, were very frustrating. Brokers are also another problem. Mm -hmm. And that, that problem, I think, can be solved by the groups. Uh -huh. if, if the farmers they can be united to be selling mangoes in groups. How much were they buying your mangoes from? It was from two shillings to three shillings. Mm. Two shillings to three shillings per piece. Mm. Yeah. And now? Now the price 
has improved it tremendously because the price is currently is from uh, 80 shillings for export mangoes to 15 shillings per piece. Is that good for you? It is, surely. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So, Sebastian, yes. how have the market managed to do that? that it's, a, it's a big, it's a huge leap. It is, it how is. How has that happened? Uh, and I'm, I'm quite happy that you say that because it's a challenge that most farmers in Kenya are experiencing. They, they get shortchanged because uh, the local market will actually take anything, regardless of the quality, and hence the price is dismal. But now, as we go into the export market, more stringent uh, qualities and characteristics from the buyers themselves are being sought for for the mangoes produced by our Kenyan farmers. Key among them, they will look for residues in the mangoes that we produce. They will look for mangoes that are free of seed weevil that we've managed to control. And they will also look for mangoes that are free from fruit fly. So having said that, and with the proper follow-up of the entire Real IPM program, you are guaranteed of this export market, which means more profits for our farmers. Real IPM make biological pest control products so that farmers don't have problems with chemicals and chemical residues on their produce. To control fruit flies on the mangoes, Muraithi uses four ADD traps like this for every half acre. The traps attract the fruit flies which go into the trap. When they leave, they have a killing agent on them, which kills the other fruit flies they meet. When you buy a half acre kit, it also comes with campaign, which you use to spray the trees and drench the soil to kill fruit fly eggs and mango seed weevil. Use 20 milliliters of campaign in 20 liters of water and do the spray and drench at flowering and again at fruiting. Real IPM have an online shop where you can buy all their products and they also do farmer training so you can make sure you get it right. Now, from one great farmer to another, I'm in Kikui with Samo. The last time we were here, his capsicum crop was doing very badly. It was full of weeds, and there was no irrigation, and the fruits were very small. Things look a little different now. His greenhouse is full of capsicums and tomatoes, and they look amazing. So how did you transform all this? Okay, the key is uh, hard work waking up in the morning, mm -hmm. and again in the afternoon I'm always here, right. making sure that everything is working light. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I did got help uh, from Peter, from uh -huh. the old seed. Aha! Uh -huh. Everything went very well. Uh, right. The planting was good, the drip irrigation was working well, and mm -hmm. the plants had a very good start right. to growing. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when I then came back to see Samuel at the end of January, mm -hmm. we found that the tomatoes had a serious problem. Samuel's tomatoes have bacteria wilt. Peter brought Osho to help. Sammy from Osho is here today to show me what happened and how they fixed it. Bacteria wilt is soil resident. Mm -hmm. It will stay in the soils. Yeah. So right. to wait for the subsequent crop, it falls within the Solanaceae family. Mm -hmm. And I said the, the likes of tomatoes, the likes of capsicum, the likes of eggplants, they are all Solanaceae. Right. Solanaceae family are those uh, plants that will give fruits with so many seeds inside as the fruit. So those plants will not survive where bacteria wilt uh, is resident. Mm -hmm. So we ha you have to take precautions early enough mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. disease not to have eaten away your crop. Mm -hmm. So that's how we came up with the product Enrich. BM. That's a an antibacteria product, which mm -hmm. if you drench, if you suspect that you have the problem, you can dry, drench early in the soils before you do the real planting. Then in the course of the, the plant's growth or the, the, the growth cycle, you need to come at least once in every month and you do a spray. It will give that plant a mechanism to fight off the disease and you are able to go through a, a, a growth cycle successfully. So Samuel, you should also know that this bacterial wilt mm -hmm. with the settings of a greenhouse, the conditions are so ripe yeah. for the quick multiplication of the bacteria. That's why you'll see many farmers will abandon their crops or their greenhouse farming because of this bacteria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't know that it is the conditions inside a greenhouse that is warmth and the moisture that you provide through the drip line. The mm -hmm. bacteria will thrive very much. So you're supposed to anticipate for that problem when you are engaging yourself into such kind of farming. Mm -hmm. So next time you do it, proactively 
uh-huh. you don't run or you don't rush to to, mm. to to heal the problem when mm-hmm. already it's there. It's good that you take cover or you take prevention before the disease comes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, Peter, what did the, what is the impact or you know what were the effects after using the Osho chemicals for this farm? Well, what what mm. Samuel found, he mm. he applied the enrich on the on the soils here, and right. then he further added some of his own uh, manure from his own cows here, mm-hmm. and within two to three weeks, the plant started to revive again. Ah. And you can see now right. that six weeks later, mm-hmm. we now have a fantastic crop of tomatoes here. Yeah, you can see. Actually. Very, very healthy mm-hmm. and very large fruits. Right. And that is a, a straight uh, fact of the enrich cleaning mm-hmm. the soil so the plants could then grow health- healthily again. Right. Yeah. Wow. I've, I've seen some really big capsicums somewhere, right? Yeah. The mm. capsicums are looking fantastic yeah. as well. Samuel's taken all the advice we gave him last time mm-hmm. and he's grown on the two stem system which is what we advised is the best way to go Mm -hmm. and you can see that the peppers coming up here now are large sized uh, and growing at a very even spacing Mm -hmm. up the stem here so we've got a fruits at the bottom then another fruit here another one here and further on up to the top here so a very well balanced capsicum plant here Mm -hmm. which will reap benefits when we come to harvesting and yielding from here Mm-hmm. So he should expect a lot of harvest from here. He will expect a very good harvest from this greenhouse now. Mm-hmm. He's followed all the advice that uh, he's learnt and we've given, mm-hmm. and he's got a great crop. Well, well done. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> With very good crop management, mm-hmm. this passerella, which is the red pepper, yeah. he should be yielding anywhere between 6 to 10 kilos uh, right. per plant, mm-hmm. and this will be over a period of the next six months of harvesting. Right. The Alanga here, again, he will be doing the same. You can see we've got very nice big fruits here. Yeah. Um, I would imagine he's going to be averaging 250 grams per fruit. Uh-huh. So four fruits mm-hmm. making a kilo. Right. So the same yield can be expected here, anywhere between six to 10 kilos per plant, which right. is fantastic. Mm-hmm. So the Chonto tomatoes here, looking very healthy, very big yield coming. You should expect to yield between 15 and 20 kilos per square meter over the life of the crop. So that'll be the total yield once you've completed harvesting over the next six months. <laughs> <laughs> smiling all the way to the bank. Oh, smiling all the way to the bank. Okay, all the best. We've done a whistle-stop tour of three good, good shambas. And we're very happy that our farmers have gotten good advice from our experts. You too can get great advice by keeping in touch with us making use of our call center. Mm -hmm. So see you on our next Shamba. Are you a farmer like me? Do you want to smile all the way to the bank? It's simple. Just get all your answers from iShamba by just SMSing the word JOIN to 21606 and they will call you any day, any time. Shamba Shape Up is also online. Visit us at shambashapeup.com. Select the episode and click play. You can also visit Shamba Shape Up's Facebook page where you can enter great competitions and also get involved in great, great discussions. Shamba Shape Up is also on Twitter at Shamba Shape Up.